Alex Ross, and I'm doing my first CGC signing this year. It'll be the exclusive way to get my signature, and submissions are limited, so please send in your books now. I'm working on a four-part cover uh, Avengers illustration that has probably the longest lineup I've done of Avengers members in one single piece. The year 2023 is the 60th anniversary of the Avengers and the X-Men. So I was asked to do some cover designs that could be featured as special variant covers and I counterproposed with a, a couple pieces I would do, one for X-Men and one for Avengers that would be cut up into multiple covers. So these are complicated pieces that have a lot of figures in them, so there's been more than the average amount of work for me and what I've uh, put into making these paintings happen. With the X-Men piece, I didn't originate the design. I copied an existing classic cover design that everybody would know and connect to, and one that most people wouldn't think I'd do from the 90s, which is meant to be the appeal of it. And um, in the case of the Avengers, I really wanted to capture something of the era I grew up with, but also pretty extensive. So I, I pretty much captured the first 30 years of Avengers roster uh, that went from the 60s through the 80s, but I top out at the end of the decade, so I pretty much end where 89 closes. When I'm doing an illustration of this many characters, some of which I've barely touched on before, I'm trying to make sure my work is aligning with how the character looked and the attitudes that the characters had. So I'm trying to get in a lot of careful details and take notice of costumes and aesthetics that I haven't put time into before. Most of these characters I have drawn once or twice before. I was steadily a fan of the Avengers and uh, most of the teams that would be featuring prime groups of characters from either the two companies would be my greatest appeal because when you follow those books, like the Avengers and the Justice League, you feel like you're getting the biggest cross-section of what those companies had to offer. I very much like the Avengers movies. They're very good and, uh, you know, they create a path that's very hard to live up to with anything further they do because they've done so well up to this point. The X-Men piece crosses a couple lines for me that I don't normally choose, which is I usually avoid doing pieces with uh, Gambit in them. It's like a generational thing where I didn't get what the hell is a Gambit. He energizes cards, playing cards to throw them at people. I just, nothing about his whole look, design, whatever really grabbed me, but I did read a lot of those comics when he was coming out in them. So here I am drawing him, painting him, in the context of the whole group scene because he was there. He was a fundamental part of that team. And I don't intend to show him disrespect, but he also is kind of like the era of comics where they would throw a name on a character that you would have to go, what does that even mean? The thing is, you got all the guys who were young when this stuff was coming out who are now in their 30s, and the last thing they need is old Fart McGee telling them that, like, you know he was never that good. It's like, that's exactly what comic fans don't like to hear. We don't like to be told the thing we grew up with is less cool than some other ridiculous thing that preceded it. So I, I'm in no position to tell people that my stuff is better. I try and do the best with everything I'm given instead of like intentionally trying to disregard or, or treat it poorly. So I'm always putting my best effort, but I'm always highlighting the things I want to show off that I appreciate the most design-wise. I love the design of Colossus. Uh, in so part, I just think he's a beautiful looking character that looks like he should have been the lead of the team. You know, he's sort of like a cool Superman archetype with, you know, striking chrome skin and beautiful uh, dynamic costume with the big wide shoulder pieces. So instead of a cape like Superman, he walks around with the huge shoulder pads and uh, uh, just always been drawn to him and his triangular shaped head and there's characters like the original design for Storm or, you know, many of her various costume designs over time I found very appealing and attractive. Um, these are great characters from the what's considered 
classically the new X-Men, even though they've been around now for 50 years practically. Yeah, the design for the X-Men piece is showing sort of an accentuation of the action, where it's a split second difference later. So you've got Wolverines completing a full attack swipe, and uh, everybody is kind of attacking more hard. In fact, I added in the bit with lightning coming from Storm commanding it, which would again be a split second of movement and, you know, something that would exist in in time in such a quick moment that you wouldn't even be able to clock it. It's so fast how lightning moves. Um, all these things sort of accentuating the figures, pushing them beyond where the original uh, composition had them frozen previously. So it's not a, a similar recreation as I've done with a lot of other things where I've tried to embed the exact poses that the original artists had done. Uh, here I'm kind of reinventing slightly those poses.